Hey y'all, welcome back to the doghouse. We talked about our four things that you need for training. Yes, I like that thing you just did. I like what you're doing, give me more of it. That's incorrect and that's unacceptable. We talked about how to create our yes, I like that thing you just did with our classical conditioning and our little puppy Harley here. So what does that look like? Okay, so in the beginning, I say, Harley, and see how she comes towards my hand? I mark that, right? And it's just targeting. Give it a move towards my hand, and I mark that, and she gets her reward, okay? Now, I'm not having to mark cookie, mark cookie, because I've already done that. Now, it's about marking the behavior that I like. She gives me a sit. Yeah, I like that. Very good. Good girl. I like that you're doing that. Give me more of it. No. No, that's incorrect. We talked about that. No. And then I get her attention again. Yeah. And she sits. I mark that behavior. Then I toss the cookie. Now, one of the little tricks you can use, and it's nothing special, lots of people do it, but when I get a sit, if, I wanna, if I'm working on sit in particular, then, very good, I toss my cookie like that because what I'm doing is I'm resetting my little puppy. Right? Now she's standing. She's moving about so that I can then create another sit. Okay? Same thing applies if I'm doing a down or anything that's stationary. Right? Once I start getting that behavior, right, I mark it, and then I toss the cookie, and that moves her around. And so I'm ready to, she's reset to do another one. Okay? And so now, very good. If you also hear, I'm not saying sit. Very good. So right now, I'm using my hand to create a behavior. Now, she already knows to do it. I mean, she just started doing it on her own. Well, great. Instead of me luring her into position, I can just capture a behavior that she's offering on her own. Again, that's the great thing about having a marker. She just does it. I like, whoops, I missed that one. So I like what she's doing. I can mark that behavior. And then I can reset her and get another one. Okay. Now as time goes on, what I might do, mark that, mark that, good. Then give a cookie. Right? So now I just chain two behaviors together, right, with my clicker, but only one cookie went. Very good. Very good. Good job. Okay, so now I got two of the same behavior, right, with one cookie and two clicks. Okay, so the idea is, and look, see how excited she is? Oh, my goodness. Oh, what happened? Very good. Good job. Good job. Very good. Okay, so once I get that going, I then want to start varying my cookie delivery system. Okay, and what we want it to look like is instead of every time I'm paying, I want to think about it in terms of a slot machine. Okay, and there's a few reasons for that. If I'm paying every time, lots of big jackpots, lots of cookies all the time, I can get really fast results. And you see that a lot with trainers nowadays is they'll use that method because it looks really flashy and the dogs will start performing really well. But long-term studies in that have shown that the learning is only short-term. Right? The behaviors don't last over time if I'm over-rewarding in the beginning. Right? Because again, it looks really good and so I might get really excited and I'm really, wow, 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 bang, 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 cookies. But long-term learning, it doesn't work as well, okay? So the other part of that is if you think about how you sit down as a slot machine, if you've ever played one, if you have or not, I'm sure you've seen one, okay? So the idea is I, I put in my money, I pull the handle, sometimes it pays, sometimes it doesn't, okay? And in those moments, sometimes, like if, I, if it's a quarter machine, I put in a quarter, it gives me my quarter and 50 cents back. Eh, but it's something, right? Then sometimes nothing happens. Then sometimes it might give me $5. But every now and then, boom, I get $200 off my quarter, and that's a jackpot. Okay? So knowing 
that keeps us sitting there over time the way that it does, right? then I want to make sure that I'm doing my rewarding with my dog in the same way because it'll keep her sitting there for a lot longer too. Okay. Now also imagine if you know, at some point I want to be able to move away from my cookies. I don't want to have to carry around a bag of hot dogs in my pocket all the time just to get my dog to pay attention. Okay. So if you imagine you sat down at that same slot machine, you pulled the handle, it paid. But it was, you know, 50 cents, 75 cents, whatever. Right? Pays, 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 pays. You pull it a hundred times and it pays every time. And then all of a sudden, it doesn't want to carry around its cookie bag anymore and it stops paying. Do you sit there and continue to put money into it and pulling that handle? Why no you don't? You move on. Right? You go to the next one because this one's either broken or paid out. So what happens is, is if I'm always paying my dog like that, uh, eventually, when I decide I don't want to carry around bags of hot dogs anymore or what have you, they stop. They stop working for me, right? Because I'm either broken or paid out. Okay? So be careful when you're doing your rewards. You want to vary it. You want to mix it up. You want it to amount to a slot machine. Okay? Now, there's... If you go look it up technically in operant conditioning, there are technical terms for this. But keep it simple. Remember how a slot machine works, and that'll keep it exciting and fun for your dog. They'll keep interested in the game, just like you do with a slot machine. Um, and when it's time to move away from using our cookies, because now my dog has been trained and knows what to do, it's a much easier transition from cookies to no cookies. And then when I want to start shaping new behaviors, I get my cookies and my clickers out. The process begins again. Once the behavior's there, all this goes away. And now we have a dog that knows what they're doing. Okay? And whatever we're doing, whenever we're starting a new behavior and starting to work through these things with our reinforcing new behaviors, it's going to take us approximately six weeks for these things to sink in. Okay? So now I want to be consistent, work it daily, two to three times a day. And again, it doesn't have to be anything formal, right? I might be uh, having me some cheese out of the old bag and I get my dog there, you know, because now we're sitting watching the TV and, and having a, a cube of cheese. Well, now I can work a little of that, eat my cheese, work a little of that. So it doesn't have to be formal. Squeeze it in whenever you want. She just happens to be sitting there and comes in and sits down and starts paying attention to you. Capture that behavior. But if you'll do that consistently a few times a day over the course of about six weeks, you have a trained dog. All right, guys, get out there, do more with your dogs, train smart, train often. We'll see you next time.